What's up guys, back with another video. So today we're talking about MRV and MEV and how I think it is not a good system and I do not use it with myself or with clients. So MRV is sort of the brainchild of Dr. Mike Isratel. Now, I have a huge amount of respect for this man and this is not a criticism of him whatsoever. However, it is somewhat of a criticism of his brainchild because I don't think it is very practically useful. So first of all, what is MEV and MRV? MEV stands for Minimum Effective Volume, and this is essentially the least that you can do and still make progress. MRV stands for Maximum Recoverable Volume, and this is the most you can do and still recover. So typically MEV is going to be a somewhat low amount of sets per week and MRV is going to be a much higher amount of volume, measured, again, in sets per muscle group per week. Now, as a concept, I think this is very important to think about, and I do think it has value. But as you'll probably see in this video, it quickly breaks down in terms of practical and pragmatic application. And this is why I don't use it, and I don't really use it with clients either. First, it's measured in sets per muscle group per week. However, anyone who has trained for any amount of time knows that different exercises absolutely stress the body in different amounts. So if you take an exercise like a leg extension and you go to failure, that is not going to be the same as a set of squats to failure when it comes to actual recovery and actual stimulus on the quadriceps muscle. It's just not the same. If I do 10 sets of leg extensions with the same effort as 10 sets of squats, honestly, they're not even the same. 10 sets of leg extensions, I might get a pump, but I'm not going to like really feel it the next day or two. Plus, I'm probably not going to see as much growth. But 10 sets of squats close to failure, holy crap. Same thing with seated leg curls versus a deadlift or versus a Romanian deadlift. These exercises are going to be far more stimulatory for the hamstrings. Plus, some exercises sort of are a half a working set. So if I do a set of deadlifts, it's working the calves, the hamstrings, the quads, the adductors, the glutes, the spinal erectors, the lats, the traps, the forearms, even a bit of rear delts, and even a bit of the long head of the triceps to extend the shoulder. So you can see me deadlifting here. This does work the quads a little bit, but it doesn't work it as much as a set of squats. How much less is a set of deadlifts versus a set of squats? Well, if you're doing sumo, it's gonna be more stimulatory than conventional. If you're doing a deficit, it's gonna be more range of motion, thus more leg drive and more quads. It depends on your technique as well. Some people use almost no quads. Some people use quite a bit of quads. How do you quantify this? Is a deadlift half of a set for quads compared to squats? Is it 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.3642? It's really hard to actually conceptualize in a practical way. Personally, if I do three sets of Romanian deadlifts, sitting back, feeling the stretch, really trying to get a mind-muscle connection with the hamstrings, three sets of that and I am done. Whereas if I do, you know, a worse exercise, maybe some kind of curl variation for five sets, 10 sets, I will definitely get less soreness, less stimulation, less pump, etc., because it is a worse exercise. And this becomes really hard to quantify in this very rigid one set per exercise type of model. Also, different rep ranges. If I do 10 sets of three with 85%, that is a pretty hard workout, but it's not gonna be nearly the same as 10 sets of 10. What about 10 sets of 20? The fact of the matter is, not every set is gonna be equally stimulatory, and higher reps generally cause more fatigue and probably more stimulus as well. On a per set basis, you might say, okay, based on the research, every set is gonna be equal, but that's not really the case in practical terms. What about how close you are to failure? You know, if you're going to failure versus two reps away from failure, that is gonna be very different. What about five reps away from failure? Is that a working set? Is it a warm up? It just depends on your perspective. I've seen studies that had people do 27 sets of squats to failure per week. 27 squats to failure per week. 
No way is that actually to failure. No way is that actually a genuinely all out difficult effort. Okay, so you don't actually know where MRV or MEV is because a lot of the scientific data is a complete and total farce. Most individuals don't even know how close to failure they are anyway. So most people don't know if they're three reps away or five reps away and how much a set actually stimulates, etc. Types of recovery. Okay, so you stress the joints when you actually lift, you stress the muscles, but you also stress the immune system, the bones, the endocrine or hormonal system, you have an emotional toll from lifting heavy, and it's really hard to quantify all of these. When you're squatting, it's completely possible, it's entirely entirely possible that your joints take longer to recover than your muscles, and maybe certain exercises cause more knee stress, or lower back stress, or shoulder stress, and therefore, it's really hard to quantify. If I do a heavy set of guillotine presses to failure, my shoulders are going to be out of commission for like a fucking month, okay? One set to failure and my shoulders are going to be done. And I would say they're going to be done for most people because it's a shitty exercise. So does this mean my MRV is different when I use this exercise? Yes, it does. And therefore, it's a really difficult system to actually use. What about high intensity techniques like I talk about in my book, which you can get on Amazon for $7.99? Shameless plug. Well, if you're doing a drop set or a rest pause set, does that count for one set? Does it count for three sets? You know, if you do, if you go to failure, then you pause and you go to failure again, and you pause and you go to failure a third time, is that three sets? Is it one set? Is it two sets, two and a half sets? It gets really, really difficult to actually write this down in your training log and calculate your MRV. Furthermore, everyone is a little bit different. So some people have knees that will never, ever get injured. They have like a chiseled out of dinosaur bone knees. and it's just, They're never, ever going to have any issues. They can bounce out of the bottom position of a hack squat all day, every day, and will never have any issues. Other people, they do you know, a box squat and their knees say, hey, don't do this. Don't do any kind of squats, a goblet squat, front squat, back squat, Anderson squat, nothing, and they get injured. Okay, so it's really gonna be varied based on the individual and based on how much you can recover from. So you can't go to someone else and they say, yeah, 10 sets of squats per week. Maybe for you it's 20, maybe for you it's five. It's just impossible to actually predict before you do it. Plus, it is a moving target based on your stress, your sleep, your diet, your cardio. It's going to be very, very different. If you're distance running, that is actually going to make it more difficult to recover from your training. How do you quantify this in? Is a mile worth one set? You know, is 10 minutes on the Stairmaster worth a set of squats? It becomes almost impossible. And this is where the minutia can get into a complete and utter overload. If you want to calculate your true MRV, you're going to spend more time doing that than actually working out. MEV is also really, really hard to quantify as well. You see some people, they look at a barbell and they grow muscle. If you're on steroids, you'll grow literally doing nothing. You'll do nothing, not even one set per week, and you'll grow. Plus, there are protocols out there that do one set per muscle group per week, and they grow really, really well. So MEV is going to be very individual and very hard to quantify as well. So in summary, you don't know MEV, you don't know MRV, they are both moving targets, and they are very difficult to quantify in a practical manner. So for these reasons, I don't use MEV or MRV with myself, with clients, either short term, long term, either of them, I don't write in an MRV because it is an impossible number to actually calculate and has no practical value whatsoever. I do think it has conceptual value and I do think it's important to think about and consider, but in terms of actually applying it to your training, not so much. Again, I respect Mike. I watch his content a lot. I think he's great. I think he's hilarious. But I don't know anyone who actually uses this type of thing because it is really not very useful, in my opinion. So basically what I do is I set a certain amount of volume that I think is reasonable. And for myself or for long-term clients, I just adjust based on how they feel. If they feel really good and they're making progress, I don't change anything. If they feel really good but they're not making progress, I might up the volume. If they don't feel good and they uh, are not making progress, well, then volume is probably going to have to come down. So it really just depends on how you feel and how you are making progress, and you should adjust from there. But targeting a certain number of sets per muscle group per week, honestly, that amount of minutia is not very helpful, not very useful, not very practical, and I don't think it really has value in the real world. 
So that is all for this video. Make sure to like the video. It helps a lot. Subscribe to the channel if you are not already for some strange, strange reason. And I will see you in the next video. Peace. By the way, I'm still writing customized and personalized training and diet plans, so let me know if you're interested. The prices will continue to go up. Every time I check the competitors' prices, I am blown away by how much these motherfuckers are charging. So if you want to get in on that, uh, contact me via email or Instagram direct message. Peace again.